This is India. This South Asian country is poised to overtake China as the most populous in the world as early as next year. For now, it is still the world's largest democracy. India is home to the highest rail bridge in the world, over 1,000 feet, or around 360 meters above water. It's also home to over 2 million Hindu temples, one of which is the Karni Mata temple, known as the residence of over 25,000 rats, all revered and considered holy. But, more in line with our purposes, India is home to one of the planet's first civilizations. We have found remains of modern humans on the subcontinent dating to around 30,000 years ago, but there is evidence humans migrated there, in phases originating from further west, around 55,000 years back. During the Neolithic, permanent settlements were built in northwest India, near present-day Pakistan. By around 3,300, the first urban cultures would emerge based around the Indus River Valley. This was one of the six main cradles of civilization. The ancient Indus civilization, or Harappan, hit its peak around 2500 to 1900 BCE, with its city centers like Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, and Dolavira. This civilization is thought to have had a population of over 5 million people. The Indus Valley civilization is notable for its cities, which were some of the largest and most sophisticated of their time. The civilization also developed a system of writing, which has yet to be deciphered. Its possible drought or famine displaced this civilization, as many of their cities were abandoned and, eventually replaced by the Vedic civilization. This civilization was located in the same general region as the Indus Valley. The Vedic civilization lasted from about 1500 to 500 BCE. This civilization is notable for its development of Hinduism, which is still the largest religion in India. After the abandonment of the urban Indus settlements, the Vedic culture began to urbanize along northwest India and the Ganges plain, and eventually coalesce into 16 kingdoms and oligarchies called the Mahajanapadas. Unlike the Indus Valley civilization, which was fairly egalitarian, there was more hierarchy and income inequality in these new kingdoms. Two newer religious movements emerged from this. Jainism, based on the teachings of Mahavira, and Buddhism, based on the teachings of Gautama Buddha. By the late 300s BCE, one of these 16 kingdoms, Magadha, annexed most of the region, and founded the Mauryan Empire. On paper, they controlled almost the entire subcontinent, minus the very south. One of their kings, Ashoka, was responsible for the spread of Buddhism all across the empire. During the Mauryan rule to the north, South India would be ruled by the three crowned rulers, or three Tamil kings. They traded extensively with neighbors to the southeast, and as far as Rome. By the early 300s, the Guptas forged an empire in northern India along the Indo-Gangetic plain. They brought in a golden age for India, reforming and renewing Hinduism, leading a growth of culture visible in their architecture and art. It was a period of literature, and progression of science, astronomy, and mathematics. India would be the world's largest economy for almost 2,000 years. The Gupta Empire would dissolve by the mid-500s during a barbarian invasion, ending India's classical age. Early medieval India would be split up into numerous rival areas and dynasties. Three of the largest would be engaged in the tripartite struggle, a war for northern India. By the 900s, the Pratiharas took full control of the city of Kannauj. In the south, the Cholas gained prominence, exerting influence on Sri Lanka and other islands in Southeast Asia. Merchants traveled from India all over the Indian Ocean. Around the year 1000, during India's late medieval period, Muslim nomadic clans from Central Asia began raiding the north. They took over the northern region by 1206, establishing the Delhi Sultanate. After raids to the south, they also gained control of most of the subcontinent. But they allowed most of the local population to keep their own traditions. 
During the Mongol invasions, the Delhi Sultanate fought off the Mongols, but failed to keep the south, as the native Indian Vijayanagara Empire was formed by 1336. Modern warfare fell upon the Delhi Sultanate during the modern period. By 1526, they were subdued by other Central Asian raiders, this time using gunpowder. These new Muslim rulers then established the Mughal Empire. To quell rebellion, they allowed some natives to join the administrative class. The Mughals were inspired by the neighboring Persian culture, resulting in Persianized architecture and giving the emperor a divine status. Because of the period's relative stability, art flourished once again, and the economy expanded. Different native groups would form though, an attempt to take back India from the Muslim invaders. In the Punjab, the Sikh empire formed, under Ranjit Singh. His army and administration incorporated Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, and Europeans, and was instrumental in fending off invasions from Afghanistan. The Mughals lost most of their power and territory though, from the Maratha. By the 1700s, trading posts from Europe had been established along the coast. The most prominent was the East India Company, from Britain. Teaming up with a few self-interested locals, the company began military and administrative operations, and eventually, by the mid-1700s, achieved company rule over India. It then continued to subdue other Indian regions for decades. India was no longer able to sell its raw materials to other nations directly, they were only allowed to supply the British. This forced natives to focus on other pursuits, like education, and cultural achievements. By the mid-1800s, the East India Company had established a capital at Calcutta and became more involved in affairs. They brought over British advancements, like the railway system and telegraph, but it came at a cost. Land taxes were predatory, and British social reform was seen as intrusive to Indian culture. This prompted the Indian Rebellion in 1857. While it was suppressed by 1858, it caused the British to abolish company rule and take control of Indian directly, as the British Raj. In 1885, the Indian National Council was founded as a result of nationalist movements all over India, and would continue to grow over the next century. During World War I, India was called to fight as a British colony. To stop any insurgencies during this time, the British implemented harsh laws, which were extended even after the war, like the Rolat Act, which allowed for indefinite incarcerations, and imprisonment without a trial. While nationalism was still on the rise, some worked within the boundaries of the law. Gandhi was known for his non-violent opposition. The 1940s were hard for all of India, as they were forced into World War II. But by 1947, under the Indian National Congress, they achieved independence, resulting in a violent partition of the country, creating two new dominions, the Hindu-majority India and Muslim-majority Pakistan. When the East India Company was founded in 1600, Britain was producing just 1.8% of the world's GDP, while India was at 23%. By the time the British left in the 1940s, the colonizers increased their GDP almost tenfold, while India was reduced to a third world country. By 1950, India was a federal republic. Though losing its status as the world's largest economy, India entered another economic boom during the 90s, and is one of the fastest growing economies today. India still has foreign problems with neighboring China and Pakistan, and internally, their rural areas are often living in poverty, and with outbursts of violence resulting from the caste system. As the country continues to innovate though, more and more are moving into an urban middle class and higher standards of living. Almost everyone outside India has enjoyed a Bollywood movie, and their cuisine, Hinduism and Buddhism, are adopted and enjoyed, by many in the West. So what's your favorite period of Indian history? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the homepage for the other ongoing series in our collection.